Here's a demo on what it looks like to draw a room in one point perspective. So you're first starting with a horizon line. Now I'm working without a straight edge here because I like to practice that. Uh, if you're drawing a room, particularly with a lot of furniture with overlapping details, I definitely recommend that you go with a ruler. It'll make a life a lot easier. But for me, I kind of like to try challenge my, myself here. So you're first starting with the back wall. All right, that's the first rectangle you're making. And these lines you're seeing right now, the construction lines that represent the corners, okay, of the left and right walls, as well as the ceiling that are coming towards you, right? Now you see a little bit more of a sense of there being an enclosure, all right? So first the back wall, it's a regular rectangle. You're looking straight on at it, and then use the vanishing point to draw those corners out, all right? Now the first item that I'm putting in here is a table. Now when you put furniture in your one point perspective room, you first want to box it in, right? So that's why learning first how to make a box, a simple box in one point perspective is a useful tool here, right? So I'm boxing it in. And those are the outlines. It's the construct that I'm going to use to eventually make the, the table, okay? My table in my room has those rounded edges right on the on the front end it's a little funky looking okay i'm trying to draw it as accurately as accurately as i can all right here's the legs coming in now here's the important thing what i just added there is the front profile and then now i'm thickening thickening it up right everything should look like it has some kind of thickness in the drawing don't leave things flat all right Apologize about my hair stealing the show. <laughs> I'm learning how to film a little better each day. So I'm leaving the first table as is and I'm adding a second one. All right. And the second one happens to be in front of that. So that means I'm going to have to do some erasing right, of the work I've already done. So it's a good idea to start with the elements that are closest towards you when it comes to a perspective drawing. So there's the top surface, kind of darkening in the outermost lines. And here I'm kind of mapping out where I'd like to put the legs of this table. And the way I ended up drawing them looked a little funky and, and kind of like thick. <laughs> okay. You might choose to draw them a little bit more elegant, meaning um, in retrospect, I could have tapered the legs so they're a little thinner on the bottom. It would have made it look a little more natural. Right now it looks like kind of like two by twos or maybe even like four by fours that are holding up a small plank of wood. But that's all right. You know, it's a learning process. Okay, now that the two tables are there, you get a, a kind of a slight sense of there being a space with elements in it that are receding into space. As you put more elements, right now I'm working on rendering a shelving unit. Okay, I have a long shelving unit in my office space. And once you put those in, kind of start populating that wall. The sense of perspective starts to get stronger and stronger. Over here, I'm putting in some books, books of varying heights. And if you notice, the beginning step of an object like that is always the same. I start with the outbounding box, the outermost box, and I get the basic shape of it in, and then I add the smaller details later. Now here is a painting I have on the wall. The important thing here, guys, is that everything needs to ha look like it ha it's popping out from the wall that it's on. Meaning, you don't want to stop at just the flat rectangle. Otherwise, that kind of looks like a poster, all right? You want to make sure you're thinking about, okay, where's the thickness on this, and how do I add it? Is, is the face that's um, 
showing the thickness going to be a regular rectangle or does it recede back into space and it's going to depend so that's my right side wall right there I'm just going back in there clean things up a little bit make it pretty now here I'm using the top of those paintings to estimate where the top of my first window is right there all right I drew a line, a construction line that was receding back into the vanishing point, and then I kind of wrapped that line around into a horizontal line, okay, and I offset it a little bit, okay, so that the top of the window is a little bit higher. Now here I'm adding in some uh, darker lines on, like, say, the left and the bottom faces where you would see. Um, I mean, it's really far away, so you wouldn't really see them. But that gives it a, just a little bit more pop, and it, it reinforces the suggestion that these are elements that are receding back into space. Okay, now here's a three-drawer unit that you're going to see me make a nice mistake on. Okay, I make it way too deep. Like it go, it comes out way too far. It looks like it's like I don't have space to sit. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do is erase that front face, and then that line is right right there is important. That's the one I'm going to measure to say, okay, it's going to go out no farther than that line, right, where the bottom leg is. I mean, the farthest leg is on that far table. So essentially, you want to find ways to use the existing things that you've drawn as reference to map out the other things in relation to where they should be. Right? And some of these things, setting up the, the depth of it can be tricky. Now over here, I'm using the top line of the window to map out the top line of the door on the left side wall, and those have the same height. Okay, So it's kind of the opposite of what I did with the uh, picture frame. Right? I started with a horizontal line, and then I wrapped it around the left wall with a diagonal line that recedes back to the vanishing point to find the top line of the door okay and here I'm adding in the thickness of the door we don't want anything to look like they're painted on the walls unless they actually are <laughs> okay the door has some thickness before it, um, like it jogs into the wall before the door actually uh, happens over there and if you'll notice I'm erasing a whole lot and that's part of the process make mistakes learn from them adjust and edit here I'm adding in, I'm boxing in a headboard, okay? And already from the start, I'm thinking about just the small amount that it's offset from the actual wall, okay? I'm not painting it on there. Now you'll, you'll see me make a big mistake here again. I make the bed gargantuan. <laughs> it's like Shaquille O'Neal's bed. That's okay, though, all right? I'm, I'm drawing out the box spring, and you'll see me do some erasing, and I'll later... Uh, later on, regret that and <laughs> decide to get those lines back in there, but that's okay. Yeah, right about there, I'm realizing this looks kind of weird. <laughs> so I shorten up the bed. The bed does end up looking a little too small eventually, but it's okay. This is just a study. <laughs> All right, doesn't have to be perfect. So here's the out constructs of the, of the bed, and you see there I lightened up the box, and I'm adding in the little ruffles and textures that you might find on the bottom edges. As you know, you see a pillow right there. Important thing to note here is that the box that you're putting in is not the piece of furniture; it's the construct you use to eventually draw your piece of furniture. Okay, and in this case, a bed has a lot of organic. Uh, shapes that you want to try and mimic, okay? So we've done something. We've added furniture that's popping out of uh, each wall so far, left, the front, uh, the back wall, and the, and the left wall. I'm going to add a little something after I'm done prettying up the lines over here. I'm going to add a little something to the ceiling to finish this drawing off. There 
we go. We're going to add a little indentation into the ceiling. It's like a, it's called a soffit, all right? So what you saw there is I started with a flat rectangular shape that's receding in, and then I later added on the uh, the thickness, all right, with those small, tiny vertical lines, and I use those to control the depth of this. So now there's an indentation up top, and the final element, and this I'm not drawing any, uh, I'm not going to be drawing any construction lines back to the vanishing point, I'm just eyeballing it in. This is a little light fixture, one of those nice modern looking light fixtures. There you go. And there's the finished room. So try this out with your own room, all right? See what results you get, see what mistakes you make. Uh, just put your pencil to paper and see how you develop. Thanks for watching.